Hi guys, we have a question here asked uh, to the Muslim scholar, the characteristics of jinn. So let's see what uh, what the, um, the Fatwa Center scholar has to say. Uh, the question asked is, I want to know about jinns, where they live, how they live, their lifestyle, their bodily structure, their power strength, what they eat, how they born, everything. Will you please inform me about them? And the answer says here, uh, we cannot mention everything about the jinn in this fatwa. However, I, we would highlight briefly the points you asked about jinn. Jinn are subject to the commands of Allah, the same as human beings. Therefore, some of them are kafir, and some of them are dissolute, and others are manim. Hmm. For more details, you may refer to the books written on the subject. And then he gives a, a list of, um, of books that you can read, and then picks up from there the points about the descriptions of the jinn. One, residents of the jinn, they live in the same earth where we live, but they live mainly in deserts, ruins, and impure places, such as toilets, garbage dumps, and graveyards. They also exist in abundance in markets. Okay? <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no idea why they would want to live in markets. But, you know, if you equate monsters and evil things, you know, to gr with graveyards, garbage dumps, and toilets, I think in reality you're... You're probably thinking about germs and, um, you know, microorganisms and things like that. And in that case, those are evil things. But I think Islam, they took it a step further and they made it into, you know, jinns as well. Okay, let's go on here. Uh, they also live in the same house where human beings live. Well, we know that Muhammad said that jinns can float around the ceilings of your homes and, and look down upon you uh, and watch you, whether you're sitting there eating or watching TV. I just think it would be so frightening if you look up and see a jinn. Uh, wow. <laughs> You'd want to move out of your house, wouldn't you? But uh, also, you know, Muhammad, he said that jinns can have sex with you in your bedrooms. And uh, I was thinking that's just amazing. Because, uh, you know, imagine a housewife, she goes into the bedroom and she finds her husband, uh, you know, forging sleep on the bed. And uh, But his hands are maybe down, you know, a little bit lower than they should be, and he's groaning, okay? What's she going to think? You know, he's going to turn around, wake up, and say, Hey, uh, a jinn was having sex with me. Uh, I wasn't doing what you think I wasn't. But, you know, truly, I think he was just a wanker. And I think that Muhammad, when he told people that jinns can have sex with you, I think maybe it was because him and his buddies, maybe they were caught in the act of, you know, wanking? I, I don't know. It's just pretty far-fetched. It's pretty crazy stuff. Let's just go on. It says, but whenever Allah's name is mentioned or Allah is glorified or the Quran is recited, especially Surah al-Baqarah, they flee from that place. Okay? So guys, from this, we can learn that jinns live in your houses every day. They're in your house all the time, watching you, playing with you, spying on you. You know, you sit in the toilet, and uh, they're looking up from the bottom of the toilet bowl into you. Yeah, it's just freaky stuff. But you have to mention, you know, the Quran in order to get them to run away. Don't forget to do that, all right? Their food, drinks, and lifestyle, jinn eat and drink. As proved in Sana that the Prophet said that every bone in which Allah's name was mentioned would be full of meat for Muslim jinns. Okay, so now you know that Muslims can be jinns, or jinns can be Muslims, right? And I just find this kind of strange, that why would you want to be mentioning Allah's name so that you could produce invisible meat on a bone to give these jinns? It just doesn't make any sense. I know that you want to say they're your, your Muslim brothers and you're just feeding them, but... Oh, I don't know. It's just too much. Okay, let's read. And done of animals becomes food for their cattle. What? You know, since when did jinn become farmers? They've got cattle now? They've got their own farms? Okay, what else? For this reason, the prophet prohibited using bones and animal dung to cleanse oneself. Okay. Whew. Guys, who who uses poop to clean off your poop? You know, only Muhammad, right? Only Muhammad would teach something like that. 
Okay, um, the prophet said, do not cleanse yourself with bone or dung because they are the substance of your brothers from amongst the jinn. Okay, <clears throat> what else can we learn? Uh, the devil eats and drinks with his left hand. All right. Well, you know, um, I, I think that in some of these Middle Eastern countries that were, you know, suffering, um, suffering poverty and ignorance and lack of education, that historically, I think that you know they probably had, uh, you know, more buckets of water perhaps beside their uh, you know their bathroom places and they didn't have anything else to wipe and cleanse themselves with so I think that they use water I I've heard that some countries even do that today they'll use uh, just a bucket of water with their hand and then they'll wash themselves so I can see why um, you know if they don't have any soap they'd want to you know, just probably just use one particular hand for that. Uh, luckily and fortunately for the rest of us, we have soap now, and uh, you know we, we can wash and sanitize our hands. It doesn't really matter if you do. If you live in a country that doesn't have any soap, um, you could you could get horrible things underneath your fingernails. And I could understand how this would apply in some desolate countries that suffer with uh, these sort of uh, habits and necessities. Okay, jinn also marry, propagate, and die as reported in Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay, uh, blah, blah, blah. okay, that's not so interesting. Uh, mm, Satan has a very ugly face. Allah made the fruits of the tree of Zakum that springs at the bottom of a hellfire similar to the heads of Satan's. Allah makes them similar to the heads of Satan's because all human beings have fixed in their minds a very bad and ugly fixture of Satan's and bad gens. Okay, well, I particularly don't agree with this at all because um, I think this is superstition. People have associated ugliness and scariness with Satan. But the fact is, is the Bible says that Satan was an angel of light and he was the most beautiful, the most beautiful. And I think that if Satan is going to inspire us to join him in his sin, he's going to make it attractive for us. He's not going to make uh, make it unattractive and scary because we'll run the other way. Instead, he's trying to make us run to him. And that's why we fall into sin, because we fall into temptation. So disagree with this verse 100%. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see, jinns are made uh, able to adopt new forms and shapes. Oh yes, like the shape of a dog and a black cat and a crow and a bird, right? All that stuff. Snakes. Mm. Uh, what else? What else? Um, okay, well, you know what? I, I think, oh, here we go. Satan also can adopt the shape of a human being and an animal, especially the shape of a black dog. Okay, well, you can read the rest of that. Uh, I think that's enough. And, uh, well, I'll just end with this. They do come in different types of forms, but you will never see the original form of a jinn. What kind of forms? Black cats? <coughs> black donkeys? Blackbirds. All kinds of snakes. And especially black dogs. This is a Muslim saying that to you, not me. So I don't want anyone to accuse me of anything. You will notice that all those bad genies, they are coming to you in a form of a black animals. Actually, black horse, black bird, and endless, endless, you know, uh, 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 animals. Anything is black in Islam, he is bad. He is evil. And in here, 
we say to those who they are black African, how Muslims they fool you saying Islam don't discriminate? Ask yourself, what is the difference between a blonde dog and a black dog? What is the difference between a black cat and a white cat? What is the difference between a black horse and a red horse?